Jorge Masvidal says he is Conor McGregor's biggest check. Well, let's think about that. Didn't say toughest fight. Didn't say legacy defining. Said the biggest check. Here is what Conor had tweeted. I don't know what this was in reference to, but he had first tweeted, quote, an absolute pigeon brain this guy is talking about Masvidal. Stupid beyond belief. Okay, again, I don't know what precipitated that, but you, you got it. Then Jorge responded, this pea brain, not the same as pigeon brain, but okay, is the biggest fight of your life, so you're either too scared or too stupid to get this check. So I guess he said biggest. BC, of the options, where I guess you could say Jake Paul would be one of them, not in the UFC, obviously, no, but you know, no. among possibilities in the next couple of years, Nate Trilogy, Jorge, I guess Habib coming back. Where would you rank in terms of biggest? And I guess by that I'll we'll say box office. Where does Jorge fit in as a biggest box office attraction for as a dance partner for Conor McGregor? I'd say still pretty high. I mean, obviously, you know, the luster of where Jorge was in that incredible 2019 has you know solid has worn off to a great degree. But to be fair, so has Connor's luster to a, to a large detail. So you really have to ask yourself what you just did of the available pay per view fights, and you know it's it's a good headline to have terrible MMA headlines because this is how sometimes we and really most shows when there's nothing going on, what do we lean on? Oh, let's talk about who Connor's going to fight next. Right. When you look at it, Luke, I mean, if he, Nate is the lottery ticket you can cash in at any point. And I've always said that that's a timeless fight, meaning people will want it no matter where both of them are in their arc. And I do think that's true, but let's be realistic. Nate Connor 3 at this point isn't going to touch what they did in the first two fights. You know, both were, I believe, record breakers at the time, both above a million and a half buys. But, you know, Masvidal and Connor is more competitive in theory in our minds right now, maybe than it would have been a couple years ago. I know that Connor wants to fight at welterweight upon his return. This really does seem like a huge money fight. I, I'd prefer Ferguson for us if you're going to do a softer UFC Connor comeback. I know some people keep bringing up Poirier's name. I want nothing to do with that fourth fight. Could that outsell Jorge? I don't think so. I think Jorge versus Connor right now of the traditional, natural, non Habib coming back UFC matchups available. Luke, I think that's it. Now, if. UFC tried to be a little bit aggressive and crazy and put Conor right into an Usman title fight because of the idea of Conor going for a third title to be the first person, and especially under the circumstances of not remotely uh, deserving it. Could all of that conspire to that being a bigger fight? Potentially. But no, the Jorge, the trash talk, the guarantee of action. If you hate McGregor, the idea that he could legitimately get knocked cold in this one. Yeah, dude, that's, a, that's still a million plus buy where I come from. Do you agree with that? Uh, do I think Connor versus Jorge, if promoted correctly by both guys and the UFC, could that do a million buys? Yes. Yes, of course I believe that. Absolutely. I absolutely believe yeah. that. Now, I agree with you. If they got real daring and creative and said, you know what, we're going to give Connor the 170 welterweight title shot because whatever happens, we'll just go that direction. I think that would actually do more. I think that would, you know, weirdly, that fight would be, I don't think, that competitive, but it would be very box office lucrative. But this one is competitive. And BC, both, or not, both of you and I have agreed on one thing, which is you brought it up many times, which is we do believe that Connor has one more good, solid, very commendable win left in him, like a real, like, uh, you know, no, no BS kind of ability here. Is, is that this one, or do you think this is like easy for Connor. Where, where no, would you no, rank this no, no, on no. difficulty for him? This is not an easy fight for Connor, but of the available potential big fights that Connor can come back to, short of Ferguson, who seems a little weathered, is this winnable for Connor? I think absolutely. And what's right. weird, Luke, is, you know, post-2019, in the immediate aftermath when Jorge had raised his profile, us, Dana White, sort of saying, no, I don't know, Connor, Jorge seems a little too big, you could get hurt. But I think both have been, you know, weathered and watered down to a certain degree where this is. A really big matchup. It would be entertaining as shit. And yes, this is a variable win winnable fight. And if Connor did come back and win this fight, it wouldn't mean he's back, but it would certainly restore confidence in his selling power. And it might be a little bit like that one win Chuck Liddell had within that run of losses that ended his career. It was Vanderlei Silva. I could see Jorge and Connor going out there and putting on a really fun all action pay per view main event and potentially Connor winning it and people caring. So I think that would probably be the direction for UFC, unless Luke. They want to go a little bit softer, and I think the Tony fight would be a 
you know, a JV version of this, but would still sell and would still be plenty of action. But Luke, when you're talking about Connor, sometimes you do need to break glass and think of as creative a matchup as you possibly could. That's why I, you know, threw out Cejudo in the past when he was talking junk to Connor online. I know not a lot of people love that fight, Volkanovski. But how about this, Luke? Do you know who won't stop staying in ridiculously rip shape and showing up on Instagram all the time, doing weird things like jumping into a cold pool in his backyard every morning, a tub Are of you- ice? I do not know which female fighters you are watching on Instagram, no. <laughs> well, that, that we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that topic on our uh, Patreon show later, Luke. But, uh, look, you're going you're gonna to hate this. This is going to be like me, you coming over to my house for dinner and us go, I'm going, hey, Luke, guess what? We cooked hot dogs, right? Um, Connor versus GSP would still sell a shitload, Luke. It would still sell a shitload of pay-per-views. Dude, GS, I, dude, GSP would probably still whip his ass, right? I'm not saying he wouldn't, but because of the age and the time away, one fight in the last, what, nine years, GSP? One fight in the last nine years? Dude, he's still ridiculously ripped and always preparing for something. I know Mikey Mormau jumping in, our producer, saying, oh, he'll smoke Connor. Dude, he probably will. He'll probably take him down at will. But Luke, you're talking about a break glass to try to sell pay-per-views under the heading of terrible MMA headlines. Connor versus GSP is a casual fan's wet dream who isn't following the UFC day to day anymore. Dude, that's a 1.5, even if it's not sold right. I'm telling you, dude, I know a lot about selling pay per views, Luke. They won't let me in that war room, but I'm viable. I agree that it would sell a lot, but it just seems radically impossible. Not, not actually impossible, but something on the order of very close to it. Also, the other part is like, again, if GSP took a big shot. He would just wrestle. Like I think Connor, the one thing that Jorge and Nate both have going for them is like they're really probably not going to look for any kind of even clinch scenario. To be quite honest with you, not for a very long one, much less anything on the ground. I think Connor's looking for that. And by the way, Tony kind of presents something like that. Although we know he can roll and whatnot, and so that's a little bit different. But at 155, Connor's still pretty nimble. Um, Jorge is valuable because it's a, at least in theory, a winnable fight. It's a stand-up fight, and it's a lucrative fight. Nate is on the same level. So why does a Jorge fight in your mind, maybe it doesn't, so let's clarify. What is the difference in sales? And we're speaking in a world where both are promoted correctly. What is the difference in sales between K- uh, Connor Nate 3 and Connor Jorge? That's the question to me. I don't think it would be significantly different. I think the Nate because- one sells better. You do okay. I, I, I would. I'm going to argue. I think the Jorge one sells a little bit better. But you would have the history of the Nate Connor rivalry, the fact that it always entertains, and the fact that both are in our minds kind of equal right now in terms of what they have left. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, it could be six and one half dozen of the other between the two of them. I kind of like the Jorge one because I think people will come into that thinking Connor's going to get going to get you know handled. And there's a, certainly a lot of Connor hate that goes into buying these pay-per-views as well. But as long as we can agree, Luke, that Poirier shouldn't be in this conversation. And I know you're saying forget about GSP because it doesn't seem like George would want it because there's no real history assigned to it. I don't know, dude. I'm telling you, man. That shit's a, 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 you know, balls bonanza. That shit sells, Luke. That shit would sell more than any of these other fights. But it would. I'm not, I'm not saying it wouldn't. I'm not saying it wouldn't. It would. But for the guy who wanted Habib, this seems like a weird fight to come back to. It's like the guy's been off for a long time because he had a terrible, terrible injury. And then before that, hasn't looked great. Uh, you're going to come back to, granted, a much older, but still, like, in, I've, been, I've been seeing him train with, like, the Danaher squad. Like, dude, GSP is, as you know, still in tremendous physical condition. So what do you think he's training for, to be to be fair? We know he got shot down on that De La Hoya boxing attempt, and uh, what is he, still a year out from his UFC deal expiring, uh, you know, in that draconian sort of, uh, I don't understand how this is legal sort of way? Yeah. What the hell's GSP, I mean, is he going to make a karate combat? Uh, appearance what the hell's gonna happen with gsp here yeah karate combat it's the thing it's like oh i well i won't say but either way um (laughs) with with gsp i think partly maybe to stay in shape because a he just likes training i mean i'm serious about that not the kind of crazy fight shape that we sometimes see but you know like the guy loves the lifestyle that came with being an mma fighter in general so there's partly that also i think like with hollywood you know having a really good you know, being in shape, being good at physical condition, which he doesn't have to train like MMA for to get, but, you know, it's obviously a great way to get there. Um, 
And then I, th- I do think he has designs on one more combat sports experience beyond just like going into doing maybe doing like a meta, you know, what the equivalent of who, who's number one, like, uh, you know, a pro grappling match. I still think he has a sight set on another MMA fight or another or a boxing fight. Uh, and then also Hollywood. I think between those two competing interests, it's keeping him in the gym quite candidly. Yes, I All believe right. that. Um, thank you for being candid. I appreciate that. There we go. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is I don't know where Connor's going to go with this, but it is interesting to me that Jorge is now sort of like actively um, petitioning for a B-side role, right? I mean, it sort of tells you about his stock. Now, his stock is still extremely high relative to the rest of the UFC population, but relative to what it was, where then he was fielding the incoming traffic about what to do. Now he's positioning himself as the incoming traffic for fighters of higher status. Granted, there's only not many who are going to be that one, but certainly in this case, it would be true. And I, I do think it's an acknowledgement of his advancing age, obviously, and then the and it's, it's an internal acknowledgement about his still elevated, but relatively declined place in the power rankings. Is that a fair assessment to you? I think that's a fair assessment uh, uh, as well. And Luke, you know, my pay-per-view marketing brain just came up with another idea for a pay-per-view doubleheader. I just want, I just want to get one word response from you to this. Okay. Your main, your, your co-main event, Dustin Poirier versus Nate Diaz, your main event, Conor McGregor versus Nick Diaz. It's sloppy as shit, Luke. But, you know, the idea is that, you know, the winners face off against each other in the next pay-per-view. You in, Luke? You in on that? Gosh, I don't even know how that... I, I haven't even thought about much of Nick Diaz versus Conor. I'd have to think about that for a second. That also feels like a... Boy, only the brain of Brian. I, they really should hire you, but not really at UFC. They should hire you at, like, Yama Pit or KSW. Yes. 